Just like all of you, my partner Dan McCluskey of CYA and I have been engaged in long conversations about what's going on in the world and what it might mean to coffee. Each time it seems we end up on the same two questions. The first one is what's going to happen to coffee, to the experience? And this leads to the second question, which is what should happen to coffee? This is an unprecedented period of accelerated change. It's able to break even our most beloved and ingrained habits. Things are changing fast. The SCA and Square, the maker of POS systems for cafes, teamed up not too long ago to determine the type and intensity of changes in independent cafes across the United States. There were striking, striking changes that almost suggest a narrative, not just about the survival of businesses, but about the value of coffee as a social beverage and the desire of coffee lovers to stay connected with their favorite coffees. Here's what they found. A 5,380% increase in curbside and or pickup orders, a 521% increase in coffee sellers offering delivery, 109% increase in subscription coffee sales, and a 25% increase in the number of sellers offering subscription coffee sales, an 11% increase in equipment sales, coffee makers, electric kettles, things to make coffee at home. Uh, I have on the radar the Wiener Schnitzel retail model. Believe it or not, so I, I was driving to work today and I passed the Wiener Schnitzel and I looked at it and it was perfect. It has a drive through and it has a walk up retail where you can order your coffee and you leave. There's no place to sit. There's a couple of outdoor seats, like literally like two, and you leave. And the model is, is people are not going to feel comfortable sitting so much in a cafe, at least for the, for the foreseeable future. That model is beautiful. That's what I think Starbucks is going to. In the near term, we'll, we'll be, you know, we'll be doing a couple kind of uh, coffee experiences. One will be more small sort of, uh, almost kiosk style okay. brick and mortar where, you know, maybe there's, you know, 10 people that could sort of fit standing, you know, uh, in there at a the time. But if we ever need to shut down, uh, we're thinking about what locations those are. So I probably would not open up something in the financial district, a brick and mortar anyway, which used to be sort of the, you know, number one location the way you want your brand represented with, with it, that it personifies quality and specialty coffee. There's this correlation between uh, the, the, the aesthetics of your, of your location and the quality of your coffee. They think that they go together. So it's perceived that way. But with the possibility of it being shut down again, you know, I think that um, we're, we're, we're imagining places that are more in the residential neighborhoods um, and, uh, and that can sort of survive with, you know, with an affordable rent and, you know, it, it can really, it, it can be a, uh, a takeaway, you know, curbside service. So I can get into a drive through for probably maybe $150,000, which is a total game changer. So, uh, it's something that I need to get serious and, and start thinking about either way, there's going to be volume there. And I'd like to be at least on the wholesale side, on the specialty roasting side. So, I do not. Uh, I am not a believer uh, in the uh, the theory that uh, rent kills uh, a restaurant or a cafe. Um, I believe it's poor operation usually kills it. Rent is one of the consistent costs that we can that we can acknowledge and deal with. I really don't think uh, we'll see any long term repercussions from this pandemic when we look out at two or three years, even from an economic standpoint, 
you know, we uh, lived through uh, 2008, 2009, and our numbers went up. I think in talking to people and sort of looking back at that period, what we've learned is that coffee is essential, coffee is a drug, but coffee is also an affordable luxury, and it's one of the very last thing that things that people will give up. One big part of what, you know, what made Red Bay special in terms of the consumer experience enjoying a cup of coffee at Red Bay is, is the vibe, is the environment, uh, the culture, you know, the people, and just sort of the, the almost electric creative energy that, that one has in, in these ki kind of environments. Even though this is temporary, and temporary may look like a couple more months, or it may look like a year, there is a strong desire from communities in New York, and I believe all across the country and the world, to have that social connection that only a cafe can really give. Cafes are gonna reinvent themselves. If we are in a prolonged situation, I think that the technology will drive us and the consumer demand will drive us for new and exciting developments in that realm that we don't even think about right now. We haven't even considered. I think one of the, sh you know, the shining bright spots that we've seen is in the way communities and cities have gotten creative to try to get cafes open. For us in New York City, we have many streets that are now closed that have turned into cafes and restaurants and even streets that are opened have really opened up their sidewalks to allow for seating for a chance for people to come together. And that is something that is potentially incredibly exciting. I'm hoping, and I know a lot of other cafes are hoping that that's something that won't go away and that we'll see that this is a much better, more interesting community-based sort of European way to look at the cafe experience in the big picture. Landlords and developers are going to have to look differently at these amenities and are gonna to have to participate. And by that, I mean, they're gonna to have to help build out these types of independent places. Um, and they, I think that they will. Um, and I think that the concept of rent structures is going to change because those landlords need that amenity. And that amenity that an independent cafe brings to a project is almost immeasurable. People will continue to meet friends for coffee, interact with a barista who they may see every single day of their regular life, uh, go back to the normalcy of a routine of stopping into a cafe to just grab something to go on the way to work and uh, continue to connect with both people who they meet for coffee and people who they see who work in coffee, um, who are in many ways one of the most um, regular and sometimes deep relationships that they have. The barista realm has never gotten the acclaim that it really, truly deserves. I'm not about predicting the change so that I can be part of that change. I'm for making change so that it really helps single farmers who are producing copies that have blown my mind. What we want to see um, in the future is not going to be happening until the farmers are paid a fair price for the crops. And really, until they're also the barista are able to be able to receive a fair value um, of salary and wages and also a health care that they need to be able to do the work well. So the road to positive change, in my point of view, is a long way to come. That's going to be a real problem because uh, <laughs> demand may diminish. Uh, in actuality. Uh, and as that happens, uh, the price could even fall lower than it already is. Uh, and we could be seeing levels like we saw in 2001, uh, where there was way below the cost of production, affecting uh, all farms. Um, uh, labor, they have a huge problem in labor. Um, you know, so one thing is maybe some Brazilian farms and whatever, it's flat or flatter in many places, and you have mechanical harvesting, but Central America, East Africa, all of that, these are on mountainsides uh, requiring labor, and that labor is vanishing. And the incentive, of course, for young people is vanishing as well. What really terrifies me is that um, the home space, the home consumption location is not 
is not the best occasion for differentiated coffees. Uh, baristas and their expertise are not within reach. Uh, brewing may not be up to the standards that you would like to see. Uh, there is no interaction or not easy interaction between what the coffee content and the points of the differentiation of a particular coffee uh, for a consumer that is drinking at home. So that's, uh, you know, that's one of the main aspects that I see as a challenge that we as an industry have. You are going to see a, a greater increase in home consumption. The giants are going to remain. Starbucks isn't going anywhere. They may have difficulties, but I think they're here to stay. Other giant companies like that are too. Uh, and uh, there will be less, uh, less small cafes on the other hand. Distribution channels for a home uh, procurement are, uh, are a lot more concentrated. Uh, the opportunities of differentiation and building brands in those channels are more complex. Uh, so, so the possible end result is that the overall average quality and differentiation of overall coffee consumption is going to decrease. The most difficult thing for the consumer is that we as an industry have undervalued our own product. However, the, the consumer now is, is far more educated than, than they were 40 years ago. And the quality of, of coffees has continued to improve. So now, now we can offer coffees that the consumer understands have greater value. They may not be professional tasters, but if you give them some hints, they get it. When they understand why we're charging more coffee, they're going to be behind it. When they realize that this enables us to make sure that, that, that our growers, our, our providers of raw materials are able to get a sustainable lifestyle where they can educate their children and their children will be interested in taking over the farm. That makes all the difference in the world. It starts with the farmers. If we don't take care of the farmers, nothing else we do matters because it, it grows from, from there. That's why we have folks around the globe at Origin. It's exciting to see how others have come to us and, and some of our retail partners who have said, we want to use our voice and our strength to talk about why sustainability matters and not environmental sustainability alone, but also the treatment of others. But, um, but if we don't uh, upgrade the home consumption experience with uh, clever uh, and uh, interesting tactics, uh, we may end up in, in, in a situation that uh, is not going to help the brands, the differentiation, and it's not going to help the growers either. We know that in two years' time, two-thirds of corporates expect to be making big progress on digital transformation. So any aspect of our life will be touched and coffee is part of it. Two forces that ideally will shape the industry is creativity infused with technology or the other way around or a new technology with big data could have the power to provide reliable esteem on the coffee market but currently there is a little bit of fog on that especially on fundamentals because it's absolutely not clear, clear about what the coffee production is because esteem strongly differ among coffee growers, coffee traders, industry. So also to have to know what is the real um, stock level of green coffee would be very interesting because no one's know. And also this could allow maybe growers to have a more active role and hopefully, if we have a more reliable and consistent data, there will be also less room for speculation. And this could have also a positive impact on the coffee price crisis. But now the competition could diminish between cafes. Uh, so in three years, two years, three years, you're going to see potentially a lot less cafes than there are today, which opens the field again 
uh, towards potentially new experimentation, new beverages, et cetera, and a re-emphasis of single farm. Given what I've seen before with younger people coming through the cafe world, their inventiveness and their love of being involved in their own endeavors, you know, their own creation has been amazing to watch. And each new generation, because I've gone through several, <laughs> has been more creative than the one before. So that's potentially very exciting to see what kind of uh, flowering may take place. Uh, companies and employers need to connect with their employees. And it's going to be a lot more difficult now. Uh, there are a few articles in, in the New York Times over the last two or three weeks talking about that particular challenge of, of, of companies needing to connect with people that are going to be feeling more isolated, connecting, improving the, the corporate cultures uh, requires you to, to connect on a human scale. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? Uh, how can coffee be helpful in that process, in this new working environment? One thing I didn't touch about, which I think it's also extremely important for us, is the support of women coffee farmers. This is something that has been just a game changer in our work. Um, we find out that if we are able to support women, which are extremely undervalued in places like Burundi, that not only we are changing the dynamics of the family, but not only we are changing the economy in the family, but we're also changing the community because women tend to not think about themselves, but to think about others. If we can band together with other coffee companies and, it, and, and raise the expectation the consumer has for what doing right by the grower means, that will translate to other industries. Really, my, my, my vision is, is simple. It, it, it follows the philosophy the only commandment that man ever has needed is, is treat one another as you want to be treated. And we have the possibility of doing that. We just listened to members of our industry voice some important points. First among them is that coffee is essential and it isn't going anywhere. This is, of course, confirmed by industry data. But despite this essential status, there have been real changes in the last few months that will impact our industry going forward. As our speakers reimagined coffee, they spoke of the ongoing gradual trend from out of home to at home consumption that was accelerated during shelter in place. This is an important topic. An independent cafe owner shared their thoughts about the need for strategic realignment related to their physical space, smaller footprints, more outdoor concepts, suburban versus urban, changes that would make consumers feel safe and comfortable. And for some, bake in the risk of future COVID outbreaks. There was a discussion of relational and collaborative changes that could take place between independent cafes and landlords to help address new cost structures going forward. On the at-home side, you heard about the need to secure specialty coffee's place within the home coffee drinking occasions. A consumer change to lower quality coffee at home would cause serious problems throughout the supply chain and hit hardest at origin. Industry members stress the need for innovation, adding education, preparation techniques, narratives that include farmers and origins, helping consumers discern quality. And for companies and employees working from home, creating new work cultures for coffee and conversations to add the critical need for human connection related to a dispersed workforce. At the foundation of this discussion, was the recognition of the inequality at origin that specialty coffee has struggled with for years, the often brutal reality of our grower partners that sits in stark contrast to the curated cup of specialty coffee enjoyed by so many. Technology, creativity, big data could provide transparency that reduces market speculation and benefits farmers. And the important and ongoing work done at origin by many companies and nonprofits is critical, but it's not enough. Our industry members stated clearly and emphatically, 
growers must benefit fairly from the strong specialty coffee market. Otherwise, we've not only failed our partners in an abject way, but our industry itself will not be self-sustaining in the medium term. This is a very big challenge, but this is also a very different moment. Big change is born out of big disruption and suffering. Will we realize this vision? Coffee companies of all sizes banding together as an industry to make change happen? It's all up to us.